What's up guys, Axis here and I'm back with another tutorial today I'm going to be showing you how to create something like this for my Instagram, go follow me, Axis underscore FX and I'm going to be using JS placement, uh, Cinema 4D and Octane. I've not seen any tutorials on this so hopefully this should alert people to the program. Um, if you've been on Twitter and following people that um, you know are doing this sort of stuff you would have seen it already so I'm kind of late to the party. But it's a great program and I've, I've just got around to messing around with it and it's really powerful and really easy to use so why not? So if you want to go and download it it's free from windmillart.net just select whatever platform you're using and you'll be good to go. Uh, open up the RAR and just open the exe file and then I'm going to choose classic which is this one. Um, I've already created a displacement so if you just uh, click on the screen then you should uh, get something. Mess around with the iterations and background iterations, that's kind of the, the best way that i found um, to get a result. I don't really care about the rest of the stuff, um, but you can probably create some interesting and unique looking displacements by messing around with these. Also leave uh, seamless on, that just means that you can tile it if you didn't know. So uh, you know you can turn on cubic and then scale stuff down on a plane for example and then just hit save and jump into cinema and we can uh, get started making our scene. So let's just bring in a plane. I'm just going to leave everything standard and then I'm going to create a HRI by going to objects and HRI. Make sure you did delete the, uh, the texture because inside this has actually got a, a file HRI that, that doesn't actually exist, so if you're exporting this to like TeamView or something, you'll get an error before you render it. Anyway, turn the power down to zero, and then what we're going to do is we're going to create a camera, so go to Object and Octane Camera, make it your perspective. I'm going to go in here and I kind of want something quite close in, so I'm going to set this to 70, and then I'm going to go and put in some settings that I had because I'm using an, another displacement. This is what I used in one of the scenes I did, so I'm just copying them in. Kind of cheating, but I want to recreate that result because it was really nice. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an Octane material, so go to Shader, Octane, and Octane Material, drag this on, export this to the live view. You can't see anything now because there are no lights. Um, which we can add. So <laughs> yeah, but first off we're gonna add a displacement and I'm gonna turn the level of detail up to 8k, bring in a image texture and then I'm also and then I'm gonna drag in my uh, displacement. Click no there, I meant to click no but I didn't. So now it's not got a path in front of it but that's my displacement file. Uh, if I turn up the HRI real quick so you guys can see what's going on um, we should be able to see something here, but I put the uh, material onto the the octane sky, which is a problem. So if I export this again, hopefully we should see our displacement. Put it on UV mapping. That's another thing. Oh, <laughs> oh, I'm an idiot. I must have put in the settings wrong. I was freaking out there. Okay, so I'm gonna re-enter my settings. So one two six and seven two minus one three nine four one point two minus forty nine. There we go. There we go. That's it. Okay. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and change the camera settings. So I'm gonna go in here, put the uh, exposure to 0.9, gamma to 0.95, so we get a bit more of a, you know, like crushed shadows in here. Make sure that we're on path tracing as well. And I'm gonna turn down vignetting and hot pixel removal to 0.5. Oh, what else? Uh, oh, response, put that on linear. And you can add some post-processing as well. I like to add this at the end, I'm going to add it at all, but uh, I don't think I'm going to add it in this case because um, 
you know, I want to I want to keep all the details of the sharp edges and stuff. I don't really want to kind of uh, add diffusion or anything like that. So now we're going to add some lights in here, so we can turn back down our HRI to zero, and then go into objects and octane area lights, octane light. I'm just going to leave these all on default. I'm going to turn down the visibility uh, just slightly. Turn down camera visibility too. And then I'm going to change the scale of this. So um, in detail, you can just drag this down or you can change the scale uh, by clicking T. So I'm going to go, let's see, 70 something. So now it's a box, it's a square. And then I'm going to just move this back in, in Z space, I think. So right about here. It's looking nice, it's catching on the edges and whatnot. So let's bring in another light to kind of spice things up. Let's just call this red. And then because white, we'll rotate this 180. And then we're going to move this uh, to zero. And then we can start moving this across. I'm also going to move it along on X as well. Going to go and change the settings in here. Going to put it down really low though, uh, because red lights seem to like transcend the the rules of Octane. And they, be they become really bright even if they're like you know, one power or something. Also gonna turn up the sample rate, which will bring up the brightness too, immediately. But like, I just find that when you're using red lights in Octane, it's very, um, there's a lot more noise when you're using them. So let's just move this back a bit. Move this across. Maybe put this w way back in Z space. So I don't want it to be too overpowering. So something like that. And then I'm going to go into our materials. We'll do some like simple material work now. So let's change this to glossy and let's go and then put in a, a higher index. So let's go to like four. I don't want to put it to zero because I don't want it to be 100% glossy or eight. But, you know, this will do. And then let's go and uh, spice things up and add some uh, some image textures into here. Um, I'm going to be using Zomax. Zomax is uh, glossy maps. Let's go and add dirt number two. I don't know if this came with it, but I mean, I'm sure you can find one of these glossy maps. They're pretty easy to come across. Uh, and then I'm going to go and then add a gradient in here. So gradient. I'm going to move this to the middle, just so we get some, some more sharp, sharp um, edges on, on our glossy map. And I'm also going to bring this down a bit, maybe like half, maybe even lower, maybe like 10, 13 will do. So it's a pretty, uh, pretty glossy material. And then I'm going to bring in the same material I think so let's go with that that dirt again um, but this time I'm gonna put it on box projection Hopefully, maybe that'll make a difference basically box is just cubic so yeah let's add a, a gradient to this too so gradient and something like that I want this to be really uh, not as noticeable so 13% should do uh, I'm gonna raise up the the roughness actually a bit I did say it was gonna be very glossy material but I've decided against it let's go like 90 or something there we go we've got some gloss going on there uh, I mean some roughness and now we'll create a grey material to go along with this, so if we go... In fact, let's just copy this one. And... I'm gonna add... 
a different, I think I'm going to add a different roughness material here. So let's go with... Uh, nah, it's not actually, I like that, I like that. I'm going to go with a different bump. Let's go with a different bump because that'll kind of vary it up a bit. So I want like a fingerprinty one, so one of these. Is that the smudged one? Alright. And I'm also going to scale this down as well. So let's go in here, put this down to like 0.2 I'd say. 2. I mean, I don't, I'm not actually seeing any difference here because I've not set it as a material, but there we go. And then I'm also going to go and turn down, I'm going to make this like a, a grey or something. And I'm also going to put, uh, I think I'm going to mess around with the gradient in this and add a colour correction as well. So, let's go and add, let's brighten this up actually. And then I'm going to move this slightly as well so we cut off the start. So now we've got a lot of bump going on in here, a lot. Um, so to reduce that, I'm just going to bring in a color correction and then reduce this down 0 0.5, 1.5 or 0 0.15 I mean, there we go. And now let's add a mixed material. So in the first material, I'm going to add white and second material, I'm going to add the gray. I'm going to add a color correction and uh, in the textures I'm going to add a, I mean in the brightness I'm going to add a dirt texture and I'm going to raise it up to 10 and I'll mess around with the, the radius a bit. Need to throw this on here actually, <laughs> I completely forgot. It's like, why is nothing happening? Copy this uh, displacement into our displacement on our um, mixed material. Add an image texture into here. And let's add smudge, smudgy. And I'm going to reduce the scale of this actually, maybe like, let's go like 0.4. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. I'm going to go and mess around with the radius again, now that we've actually got this in. So you can kind of see, like that's, that's grey and then that's white. So. Maybe let's go in between, go like 0.7 or something. I'm going to reduce the distance here so we get a bit more light in here. Alright, I think that'll do. Um, there's not much left to do actually. Maybe reduce this slightly. Don't want it really high at all actually. Let's just have a really tiny amount of grey exposed. I'm going to bring down the distance of the red one. I want some red, red in my life now. Let's put that up a bit actually. I still want it in, but I don't want like that much of red. That'll, that'll do I think, that'll do. Maybe move it over a tad. Alright, alright. Um, now let's just run through some simple settings I think because this is looking good, this is looking ready to render I'd say. Actually, maybe I change the, the bump map on one of these. Let's go with the, the more busy fingerprint map. Ah yeah, yeah, you see like the little marks here, stuff like that. It's looking very nice. <laughs> All right. So now settings. So if you're doing a still, I'd recommend going maybe 5,000 on the samples. Um, but if you're doing a, a motion piece, go like 2048 or half that. Um, if you're if you're really struggling on render time. Um, and then I wouldn't go any higher than maybe four on diffuse because we've just got glossy materials in here, and put on specular to eight. Um, 
and you can reduce the GI clamp too because it doesn't make a difference in a scene like this. It only really makes a difference in a scene with like lots of foresty, forestry, foliage, etc. So yeah, I uh, hope you guys like this. Remember, check out my Instagram first in the description. Check out this program if you were just watching for leisure or for some reason. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video.